Fire away. Okay, Dan, good afternoon, and uh, thanks for doing some firesides with me today. Yeah, uh, it's kind of refreshing. We haven't we haven't done any in a while, so, uh, you know, at times I, I need time to regroup my thoughts uh, and where the priorities are and what we'll share, uh, but I think it's very appropriate uh, to go over the word slave, and we'll probably put more and more of these little short sessions uh, together because... Uh, we've neglected to, to actually record a lot of the discussions that you and I have had uh, more on a private level. And I think it's good to share. So uh, that's what we'll do. So anyways, the word slave uh, definition, I believe this came out of Bouvier's, one over whose life, liberty and property, another has unlimited control. So we're viewing now in the sense of a master. Now, because of what happened during the history uh, around the Civil War period in the United States, the, the word slave has a very bad connotation uh, because of people were used for monetary gain uh, based against their will. They didn't volunteer to uh, be used for labor uh, that was converted into uh, monetary prosperity for the master. Uh, these people were seized, we'll just call them, you know, basically uh, soul napped and taken. And then their bodies were, were used for this gain, um, this greed that was going on in society. Now, eventually what happened, those slaves were emancipated. Uh, but unfortunately, people don't realize that was for the not for the reasons that, that you would think. Uh, because the way society was, they were not going to allow a man uh, to use another man's labor in that manner without there being some kind of control factor, um, you know, that would bring more prosperity. So the master itself was seen to be gaining, and it wasn't really as much going to the state. And so these independent masters were trading in the value of these slaves. But Eventually, the government of the state, we'll just call it Satan's kingdoms, uh, eventually came up with a new scheme, which was emancipate as many people uh, to become legal debtors. Because at that time, uh, no slave uh, would have uh, an independent existence from his master. So uh, he didn't have control of his body or his spirit, in essence, and uh, therefore he didn't even have a legal personality. So he had no legal persona. Uh, it was only the persona that the slave master had. So they emancipated them to, of course, you'll have people with the last name Freeman, interestingly, um, out of uh, Black African culture from the Civil War period that uh, uh, basically were emancipated to become a debtor, uh, as all the rest of the population was. So uh, they were uh, they were being freed to become more independent labor within the common collective for the uh, the ones that eventually would control the greed, the banking, uh, more so. And so it uh, it was you know uh, a time period that had something happen, not for the reasons that people would think. So people think, oh wow, we emancipated them. Well, you, all the all the non uh, you know black uh, workers were already in essence, voluntary hirelings or or in servitude to the legal state um, because of them bearing these debt or a debtor last names um, that meant they were not of a covenanted uh, position with God. They were now in a basically an adulterous relationship with the state. So anyways, a very interesting background there. So Satan's world implies you can be emancipated from your master, Christ, uh, who was there in the beginning of the creation. Let us make man in our image. Uh, and so uh, when uh, when basically we look at it, the master or the creator owns the, his creation. So we are the creation of God. In the world of legal, we're in the world of imagination of Satan. He coveted what was God, so he made a recreation idea, which he's used in a legal sense to uh, basically have a debtor name attached that would say you're of an uncovenanted nation, one who knows not the true God, 
So therefore you would work in legal, which is opposite to free grace. So you would look like to an extent that you chose or elected uh, to voluntarily become in servitude, uh, you know, in a, a debtor sense. So uh, when we say Satan's world implies you can be emancipated from your master Christ and free to do your own will, uh, this will only bring you back to sin and debt and legal obligations and the stress that it brings about. So Satan pulled the trick off again. And basically, from the event of Christ, molded basically the general population into not realizing what Christ really did upon that event of his death. He uh, purchased the righteous and the unrighteous and it required your acceptance. But you cannot play both sides. You can't play in good faith and bad faith. You can't operate in the good spell and the bad spell, the gospel message of truth, and then play in the legal lies of man's positive law. So this is where we kind of lose the audience at times on this subject matter, but we are truly um, slaves um, because we are the property of our creator. And so therefore, uh, Christ being... Uh, there at the beginning with his father in the Genesis, uh, the arm of creation, and also being the firstborn of all creation, um, he basically owns us, he purchased us. So therefore, we can only serve one master. Uh, we can't serve two masters. And uh, therefore, this is where the problem is with the general collective society and their lack of knowledge. All right, Dan, that's good. Thank you.